anybody who's been held in those conditions in captivity for five years has paid an extraordinary price. But that, that is really uh, not the point. The point is that he's back. He's going to be safely reunited with his family. He served the United States with honor and distinction. Honor and distinction, or maybe not, because eventually, maybe he's going to skin back those remarks, Susan Rice will. And we're joined now by Wall Street Journal columnist James Toronto, who's written a column on the latest controversy involving that prisoner swap, as they're calling it, under the headline, Suck It Up and Salute. And James, you have an, a really great opening line, an allusion to Mad Magazine, and you say, quote, if I've lost Newman, I've lost middle America. Yeah, that being explain. Newman being Alfred E. Newman, the What Me Worry guy from Mad Magazine, which did a uh, satirical movie poster last week uh, called uh, uh, Trading Private Bergdahl, and the tagline was, they got five Taliban leaders, we got one deserting weasel. The mission is a disaster. The picture is rated NC for no congressional approval, and it shows Barack Obama as the lead actor and the five uh, Taliban as uh, playing the supporting roles. Uh, it's really quite a uh, devastating satire, and uh, coming from a magazine that's not known for being especially right-wing, uh, I think it's uh, indicative of the kind of PR disaster that the Obama administration uh, set up for right. itself. Now, with now you're right in your second sentence, the usual gang of idiots tweeted a parody poster. That usual gang of idiots, I thought you were referring to the Obama administration, but no, actually referring to Mad Magazine, that's what they call themselves. When this first broke, I remember the Republican consultant, Frank Luntz, put out a tweet warning Republicans, guys, do not come out against mm -hmm. this because you will look awfully bad. This now seems to have jumped rails and it's no longer Republican versus Democrat thing, is it, James? No, uh, quite a few Democrats are criticizing the administration, particularly for its failure to notify Congress. Now, I happen to be of the view that, uh, the, that Obama is right to say that he has no constitutional obligation to notify Congress, that uh, uh, this sort of prisoner swap is uh, an exercise of his, uh, a legitimate exercise of his authority as commander in chief. Mm -hmm. But that's a separate question from whether this was a wise deal. Hey, James, let me jump in because something you wrote in your in your piece, which by the way was great, you, you said the Obama administration was completely surprised by the hostile reaction to the prisoner swap. Why? Did he get that bad uh, of advice? Is he that arrogant? Why couldn't they see this coming down the pike? Well, uh, apparently uh, what we've seen in various reports is that uh, they were expecting some kind of backlash from the release of the five Taliban. And uh, th this is a matter of policy. I mean, you know, you talk about this swap as a deal where we give something and get something back. But from Obama's side, both, both sides were upside because he wants to uh, close Guantanamo. And, uh, you know, I think that's a terribly unwise policy. But they were expecting some blowback from that. They thought, however, that they would be pretty much universally applauded for bringing back uh, the U.S. soldier who had been held. And they apparently weren't banking on the questions about the circumstances of Bergdahl's disappearance from the base. Right, and in particular, uh, somebody from the White House last week uh, made a comment that I found very intriguing. He drew a connection between Bergdahl and the young John Kerry. Uh, by saying we weren't expecting it. this anonymous White House official told Chuck Todd of NBC News that the White House wasn't expecting uh, Bergdahl's former platoon mates to quote swift boat him right right but but you know back back to the Obama administration they thought they were going to get blowback on the Taliban but not on a man who was roundly seen by his own colleagues as a deserter and then to have that rose garden uh, ceremony with the parents uh, that that shows a real ineptitude in my mind and I used to cover the White House I, well the Susan Rice comment that we led with uh, is uh, telling here she said that he served with honor and distinction now she did take the opportunity to walk back that comment uh, although also in a way defended last uh, Friday she was in Normandy for the D-Day anniversary and a CNN reporter asked her uh, if she stands by the as comment a matter of fact, said, well, James if you'll just pause a minute we actually have that bite number five and give a listen that Susan Rice kind of kind of skins back this idea that he served with honor and st distinction. Give a listen. 
Uh, you said that uh, Bo Bergdahl served with honor and distinction. Uh, it's come out since then that some of his fellow soldiers say he was a deserter. He may have wandered off the post uh, there in Afghanistan. Uh, did you misspeak? Did you get that wrong? Jim, I realize there's been a lot of discussion and controversy around this, but what I was referring to is the fact that this was a young man who volunteered to serve his country in uniform at a time of war. That is itself a very honorable thing. Uh, and but honor and distinction. Jim, really, I mean, this is a young man who, whose circumstances we are still going to learn about. Uh, he is, as all Americans, innocent until proven guilty. James, it seems like every time the administration has something they're a little embarrassed about, they throw Susan Rice up there and throw her to the dogs. Yeah. Now, what's interesting about this is uh, she originally said he served with honor and distinction. And then basically her what she meant was simply that he only that he served, served. that he volunteered yeah. to serve. Uh, there's a difference between volunteering to serve and uh, the, na the manner in which one actually serves. Obviously, you can volunteer to serve and then serve not with honor and distinction, uh, which, according to his uh, platoon mates, is what uh, is what this young man did. Now, of course, she's right. We he's entitled to the, to the presumption of innocence. If he's brought up on a court martial on charges of desertion or any other kind of charges, he's entitled to a defense. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the idea that the the platoon mates weren't going to come forward and uh, criticize this and the idea that simply serving is enough to be called, to be uh, described as serving with honor and distinction, I think reflects a real failure to understand uh, what honor means to men in the military. Yeah. Diane, you've actually done some work and you wrote a column saying that actually military people finally are beginning to take sides and decide they don't like what they're seeing out of this administration. Well, and, and more to the point, Dennis, is, uh, and James, I think this goes to your point too, the military is now speaking up. The military never ever, historically, it was a given that the military does not criticize the commander in chief. Even retired, chief. Uh, Even retired yeah. uh, career military people. But I did an awful lot of interviews with an awful lot of Navy SEALs, uh, Special Forces people, and boy, they are spitting mad. They're spitting mad about this. Uh, this uh, prisoner swap, and I don't think the uh, Obama administration anticipated that backlash from his own military. James? Well, here's a uh, quote from a Time Magazine report that confirms that the Obama administration wasn't expecting the backlash. Quote, Obama's move was an ultimate victory for those at the White House and the State Department who had previously argued that the military should, quote, suck it up and salute, mm -hmm. end of quote, says the official familiar with the debate. Now, one should note that uh, that uh, uh, it appears from what we've uh, read about uh, Bergdahl's, uh, the, the uh, circumstances under which Bergdahl left the base, that he did not suck it up and salute. Yeah, yeah. he certainly, certainly didn't. And you, you pointed, either I forget whether you're quoting other columnists or actually writing it yourself, but you find uh, parallels that Diane found interesting actually between Kerry when he was protesting the war after serving in Vietnam in 71 mm -hmm. and Bergdahl now. Yeah, Bergdahl uh, wrote these emails to his parents, and th this, by the way, was reported two years ago uh, in Rolling, Rolling Stone, Stone. Mm -hmm. uh, which had a lengthy and largely sympathetic profile of Bergdahl, uh, although the facts were not necessarily sympathetic. Uh, one of the quotes uh, he wrote in his last uh, letter, last email before leaving base was, quote, the horror that is America is disgusting. Uh, this was not uh, dissimilar from John Kerry, the way John Kerry first made a name for himself when he testified before the Senate and described all of these purported atrocities that U.S. Uh, servicemen uh, he was accusing of committing in Vietnam, which of course came back to haunt him uh, 33 years later when he ran for president. That was what the Swift Boat uh, uh, controversy was about. Uh, he made a name for himself by slandering his fellow veterans, and a lot of them were still bitter about it three decades later, and understandably so, in my yeah. view. Well, I think what this kind of bridges into is another topic we want to get to you on, and that's this other column you wrote about who's more competent, George W. Bush or Obama. You know, those Obama folks, I feel like they feel like they are crack shot precision efficiency machine, but what's the latest poll show? Uh, 
well, there was a Fox News poll that asked people who they think is more who they think is more competent, the Bush administration or the Obama administration. A 48 percent plurality said the Obama administration is less competent. 42 percent said it was more competent than the Bush administration. All right. Now, this is uh, you can discount this. You can discount part of this as partisanship because Republicans overwhelmingly thought uh, the Bush administration was more competent. Democrats overwhelmingly thought the Republican. Uh, Obama administration was more competent, but independents favored Bush by 47 to 34 percent, with 14 percent saying they were both the same in terms of competence. So, James, so that means 55 percent of all respondents and 61 percent of independents think that Obama is at least as incompetent as Bush. <laughs> and when you remember Bush's uh, reputation in the final couple of years of his administration, that seems like a very damning verdict. Yeah, yeah, and you, you know what it is, Dennis? He's losing his. Uh, his big pot of supporters from the last two terms. Yeah, uh, th that's own, that's a thing. Have, uh, if he's not careful, you make so many gaffes like this, James, and we're going to wrap you now, but you make so many gaffes one after another, and at some point, it's going to end up uh, costing you with even your own supporters. And when yeah. Diane ends up finding out the retired military people everywhere are coming out against this swap, and yet the president chose to host that family right there, the married couple in the Rose Garden, you've really got a problem. All right, yep. thanks so much for being with us, James Toronto of the Wall Street Journal. You are prolific, sir. We appreciate right. you being Thanks here. A lot. And we're going to be right back. And we're coming up, we've got the best of five. Malzbergs, don't go anywhere.